tell the viewers, listeners, uh, you know, your story and why God has kind of put this mission upon your heart to reach women with this message. Yeah. So, uh, um, like so many women, which will hear stories similar to mine, uh, when I was 12 years old, I was innocently scrolling through channels on television and encountered a series of movies that that demonstrated kind of what this movie was trying to <laughs> demonstrate in a terrible way, but demonstrated very sexually explicit content on primetime television. And it was essentially the first exposure I had to uh, um, pornography and masturbation, which is what we'll be talking about today. And you know, I'd never really been exposed. I think right now the average age of exposure is between eight and 11 years old. So, um, and that's, you know, 12, when I was 12 years old, that was almost, uh, 18 years ago. It's kind of crazy to think about, but, um, yeah, so I was exposed at 12 years old and I, I wouldn't have said I, all of a sudden now I had a heavy addiction to pornography and masturbation, but it started very slowly. I think from watching this movie, it, it got me intrigued. And so I decided to, to test out the behavior and see what all the hype was about. And throughout high school, it just, I noticed that it calmed me down anytime where I was stressed or there was some type of emotional issue with friends or family, you know, this was a, a great way to escape. And so what I, what I initially just thought was innocent, my own choice, I'm taking control of my life and I'm using a healthy outlet, um, slowly began to take, take control of my life. And, you know, I, I got back into my faith at the end of high school and I had heard all the chastity talks and I'd known, okay, you know, sex before marriage, I see how that's, you know, attaching yourself to a person and how that can be harmful. But, you know, pornography and masturbation, you're not really hurting anyone else. That's a very personal thing that's, that's happening here. So um, it wasn't until the end of college, so now, you know, almost eight to 10 years into my addiction, um, where I got really involved in my faith and I learned a little bit more of church teaching and I still didn't agree, right? I still thought the church had it wrong. And so it wasn't until um, then when I decided to test it again in the sense of if I can give this up, then I can prove I'm not addicted. If it's easy to do, because what the church was, what I learned was essentially that if anything um, is in control of you, aka like you put it before God, then it, it is obviously not good for you. It's it's something that you put in place of Him, and so I thought if I could give it up, then that proved the church was wrong. Which, if anyone knows, trying to prove the church wrong, it's just a fool's game. Good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> so so I I attempted and and I let's to put it shortly, I failed, and. In that experience, I just realized how much it had controlled my life and had become all consuming. And so I started a journey to become free. And at the time, I tried to find resources, especially for women, and I couldn't find anything. Anything I could find was specifically for men, different programs. I mean, they had the whole nine yards. There was books, there was videos, there was just everything you could name it. And um, throughout this journey, I also um, felt called to become a missionary with an organization. And so I joined that organization, Focus, and um, similar things in terms of content and, and resources available for men, but not not yet for women, because you know you saw this everywhere. And so it was my third year as a missionary where I decided to basically put my name out there for any female missionary to contact me if this is something that they struggled with personally or maybe a student and, and needed some help. And I thought maybe I'd get a couple names, but. Um, so that was six years ago. And from the moment my name went out there, I just the flood of contacts, people reaching out to me, I just began to start mentoring and counseling a lot of these women with, with no credentials myself, but just experience in, in struggling with this and, and breaking free. And um, yeah, so for six years, I've just been working with women now that's it's pretty much my full-time gig putting this book together but really helping women who feel like they are the only ones that they're completely alone in these addictions or these struggles thinking that they aren't feminine how they sin or thinking that they're just unworthy of love because of this issue and i've i've learned i mean it, it falls into a whole gambit of of other addictions and other just ideas of sexual sexuality that women have been taught through our world and our culture that i'm even more you know falling in love with teaching and, and talking to women about. So that's a little, I mean, that's a little bit of my yeah. story and yeah. how I've gotten into it. No, I, I remember uh, when I was in high school, we went on a high school retreat and the boys go into one cabin and the girls went to the other. And, you know, right away, 
youth leaders went into masturbation, pornography with the guys, and the girls just had like 30 tissue boxes, you know, to work through. And they just talked about relationships and emotions. But like being the girl in that room when the topic is not being discussed, like as you said, I remember you saying once, and you just alluded to it, that a woman said like, I don't even sin in a feminine way. I mean, what does that do to a woman's heart when, when she thinks like there's something double wrong with her? You know, it's just like, this shouldn't be happening to me. I'm just this freak of nature. I mean, what does she do with all those emotions? I mean, you just kind of bury them, escape, and go back into this cycle of isolation, I imagine? Definitely. I mean, the amount of shame surrounding this, particularly for women, is is astonishing. And I think it, it has kept women from seeking the healing they deserve. I mean, from going to confession and, and actually receiving the spiritual healing. But then for them to, to share with friends or have any type of accountability, I think that's one of the biggest obstacles now that I'm seeing is women are finally saying, you're right, this is an issue. I, I don't want this a part of my life anymore. But then there there aren't the resources available. So then they feel like, well, I'm kind of stuck in it because there's no nothing out there for me to help me anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's just become a cyclical issue, I think. 